Hello again folks, I thought tonight we'd take a look at this little electronic curio, it's the Portable Exchange Line Simulator. This dates back to the sort of mid 90s, around 94, 95, that sort of thing, and what it does is simulate a, a UK uh, phone line, allowing you to test uh, telephones and other you know, pieces of uh, telecoms equipment. Um, so I thought we'd take a look at it, as always, have a play about with it, and then we'll, we'll take it apart and have a look and see what, uh, see what makes it tick inside. So yeah, first of all, we'll have a look at the top. Uh, on the top, we've got a three and a half mil mono socket, which is a, an external power jack. It is powered by a standard PP3 battery, uh, you know, nine volt square battery. Uh, the battery's in there. I'm not going to take the cover off, but the battery's in there and there's a, a location for a spare, uh, you know, so you can change it in the field, so to speak. Uh, and of course, we've got the BT uh, phone socket. BT standing for British Telecommunications Limited, who... Uh, supply the majority of the phone lines here in the UK. Um, slightly different to the, the you know the t telecoms connectors you would get in America and Europe. I think certainly in America you use this uh, modular type RJ11 connectors for your telephones. But yeah, uh, this is a BT. It's, it's probably got an actual number, but it is known as a BT plug. Um, can be populated with six contacts. This particular one's got four, as you can see. And uh, actually, all that's required for a standard telephone is, is a single twisted pair, you know, two wires. And that carries both the, the voltage and the power to, to drive the device and make the ringing work. Um, but it also carries audio as well, which is pretty clever, really. Um, don't know how all that magic works. Obviously, some sort of filtering and stuff. Um, but there we go. That's on the top of the unit. On the front, we've got... Um, a multi-function display we've got two sort of bar grass uh, multicolored leds the left hand side uh, shows us the status of the line and the device uh, we've got uh, a similar sort of feature with the seven segment uh, display in the middle that actually uh, decodes the dtmf tones that the the phone produces and on the right hand side we've got a signal strength meter and also a meter that measures ren now um ren stands for ringer equivalent number uh, and that's essentially um an indication of, uh, well, sorry, I should show you, on every device you have a, a REN number. So this particular phone is uh, has a REN of 1. And the standard BT phone line can support up to a REN of 4, approximately. It may be plus or minus 1 or 2, you know, that kind of thing. But as a sort of baseline, a REN of 4 is a maximum you can have on a BT line. And yeah, that's... Uh, Ren, if you like, is it's just a figure. It's I don't think there's anything, any actual, you know, in terms of milliamps or microamps or whatever it may be attached to that number. But the Ren indicates the the amount of supply that the device uses um, in terms of current, if you like. So if you have a REN of four or five, i.e. you have maybe this phone in the living room, you have one in the upstairs bedroom, you have one in the workshop, uh, and maybe an external ring or something like that, that may take you above the the the, the REN of four, that maximum theoretical maximum REN number, and uh, might actually start causing you problems because the the uh, current being supplied by the distant exchange isn't enough to power all the devices on your, your telecoms network, if that in any way kind of makes sense. Um, anyway, <laughs> carrying on, um, we've got a number of buttons on the front. We've got the brake test, line reverse, 50 volt and pulse button, and a mic speaker button, as well as the ring and tone button. Uh, also, we've got a dual purpose uh, microphone and speaker here in the front that allows us to use uh, a telephone as an intercom to, to essentially test its functionality and make sure it's uh, fully serviceable. On the back, we've got a description of each uh, feature. Some of them won't, I won't be able to test on this, but we'll, we'll have a plug in and, um, and I'll show you the bits I can show you. So um, I, I suppose actually um, I'll talk about the, the BT ring, the ring if you like, before I go anything. In the UK, and please forgive my uh, pitiful uh, demonstration of a, a of a ring tone here in the UK, but when your phone rings in the UK, it generally goes ring, ring, pause, ring, ring, pause, ring, ring, pause. And that repeats until either your answer machine kicks in or, of course, the call is actually answered. And before I even plug this in to test this particular phone, um, we can actually hear that ring sort of sequence by holding down the tone button without a phone connected. Because this has got relays inside, you can actually hear them clicking to that sort of rhythm, if you like. So we'll do that first of all. I'll hold it up to the, the microphone so you can hear.
So there's your ring ring, and then the pause, and then it you know, repeats and repeats. And on the display, you can see that it's a cycle drum, that seven segment display. So let's plug it in. I can't adjust the ringing in this, so I won't do it for too long because uh, I've not got the mains adapter uh, plugged in, which then gives me access to the controls. This has got a built in um, answer machine, so it does require power to, to access the menu. So, But we'll, we'll try it uh, like this. And there you go. And if you actually come on here, it'll actually tell us that there's a rain of around one, one and a half. It's actually going up to three there. Drop, you know, fluctuating between one and a half and two there. So I'm not sure if that's a, a calibration issue or, you know, maybe it's not quite as efficient as it says it is. Um, but yeah, so that's the actual phone ringing. That's it uh, simulating the line. Um, if I pick up the, the handset and put... Uh, that's a test. There we go. There's our dial tone simulating the line. And then I can transfer that. If I just hold it up to the, the microphone again, you can probably hear that. That's a standard UK dial tone. So this actually is a facility to decode uh, DTMF tones. And if I press the buttons on here, you can see that the corresponding number is appearing on the on the display and it will record the sequence as you can see there so it's decoding those in real time well not real time it's it's buffered the tones and then is decoding them one by one i've actually just remembered uh, that <laughs> as a child and this is really sad if i put this on speaker We used to play Happy Birthday down the phone using uh, the DMTF, uh, sorry, DTMF tones. Uh, so if somebody's birthday, you'd phone them up, and then before they, uh, as they answered the phone, you just go. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> play Happy Birthday. Really sad. Um, there we go. Sorry, I should have said as well, if I hook this on. Uh, and talk through, you can hear that there. And similarly, if I press the microphone button and talk into that, you should might uh, you might be able to hear me talking through the earpiece. So yeah, that that's essentially how it works. Now the um, the DTMF tones um, that this is actually decoding, it's actually re both really simple and really clever at the same time. The uh, DTMF stands for dual tone multi frequency and. It, yeah, like I say, it's a really simple sort of uh, thing. We've got, if we look at the number and symbol buttons here, you've got 1 to 0, 1 to 9, uh, start, 0 and hash, or pound sign, I believe it's called in America. Um, each of these three rows and these, sorry, these three columns and these four rows are allocated a frequency. So you've got frequency 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, for the rows and frequency 1, 2 and 3 for the columns. So, for instance, if I press button number five, it will the two frequencies that are uh, applied to each uh, or assigned to each row are played at the same time. So five means it's playing the frequency of signal attached to uh, column two. If we do one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, so column two and row two, those two frequencies are played at the same time down the the, the phone line. And the uh, exchange decodes that signal, or in this case, this uh, device decodes the signal. Um, you know, it simply analyzes the frequency and say, well, I've got that frequency and I've got that frequency, so that means they must have pressed button five. Similarly, if I press, you know, the the, the star symbol, that means that the cut tone from column one and row four have been played at the same time. You know, like I say, really simple but really really effective. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the device and how it functions. Um, we've got a pulse button as well, and I believe that's for the older style uh, electromechanical uh, type, um, uh, you know, dialer. You know the old clunky phones that used to put your finger and then spin a, a dialer round and it would go, t -t 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 -t, and then you'd spin it around, t -t 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 -t, and that's basically the. It actually works on the disconnect from the, the hook. So, in fact, does this work? No, it doesn't. 
So the old phones, electromechanical phones, and uh, Dave Watts, I think, was trying to get one to work. In fact, Dave, this might actually help you out. If you need it, let me know. Um, actually, what's in the disconnect? So when you were spinning that, um, spinning that number, it was actually basically tapping the hook, if you like. It was taking the phone on and off the hook. Uh, so that disconnect code um, was essentially being detected at the exchange decoded and then you know routed to the, the number you'd called and again uh, thinking as a child um not on the not on the old rotary style phone but you know one of these typical sort of bt type phones i can remember messing about with a with the the hook as we call it and it actually started ringing a number and it was just because the exchange was still set up to to function with electromechanical type dialers um I'm not going to say, well, almost similar to Morse code, if you like. It was detecting that, did, 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 you know, whatever sequence it was to dial the number. Anyway, slightly rambling on, as I always do. Let's have a look inside, because that's where the interesting stuff's going to be. Um, what are we on? Reverse. There's just four screws in this, so we'll take it out. And I should point out at this uh, point, I am not an expert, as you well know by now. But um, what I can see and, and understand, uh, I will tell you. And what I can, I will maybe speculate as to how something works. Oh, there's actually an interconnect. All right, so yeah. So there's the back of the board. Um, we've got the, the main display area, as you can see there with a... Uh, bar LEDs and uh, seven segment display on there and there's a little DuPont an actual proper DuPont connector I've not seen one of those for a long while and that's connecting the sort of proprietary you know custom made uh, matrix um, switch system um, membrane switch I should say not matrix membrane uh, switch system behind the uh, the fascia here uh, this uh, so a brown device here, Wayrad PC8000, whatever one of those is. Uh, there's a date code on that, that's 1195, so November 95. So yeah, bang on what I said, between 94 and 95. Um, got a few bits and pieces in here, not really that much. Lots of, uh, um, uh, what do you call them? I forget what type of capacitor that is. Uh, um, Polyester, is it polyester caps? I can't remember. Um, that's a, a switch, sorry, you know, a switch microphone and speaker. Uh, we've got the, the actual ROM here or software um, that's that's actually going to run the thing. That's dated the 8th of August, um, yeah, 8th of August 95. Yeah, keeping in with that date code there. And uh, on this side, there's a, a BT plug there, socket, I should say. A few jumpers. That will, that will be our four relays, I, I assume. We've got these uh, two, possibly transformers. Yeah, I imagine they're transformers, and what they're probably doing is is bumping up, bumping up the nine volts that's uh, you know been supplied by the battery to this uh, 48, 50 volts that the the BT phone line uses. We've got some. Uh, 74 HC 85 quite a few of those um, I think I think well I don't, I don't know about the actual whole uh, number but I'm pretty sure that 74 HC is a shift register so I'm not sure what how you know how those are being used or what they're being used for um, when I think the shift registers I think LEDs so I'm not sure it's to do with dialing or anything like that please of course if you, you I've got a greater understanding of this or, or these particular uh, chips here um, these semiconductors pop your comments down below and, and please prove me wrong or you know or, or confirm that my guess was correct um, but yeah that's about it really um, nothing much else in it you know barring a few transistors and other bits and pieces, a uh, few electrolytic caps and, and diodes and, you know, the usual sort of through-hole construction that you'd expect of something of this uh, vintage. But there we have it. Um, yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. That's the, the portable exchange line simulator. Um, not much else really to say about it. Um, have you used one of these? Uh, are you aware of anybody else using them before? I've certainly never seen one of these. Um, let's say it came up in a, a random eBay auction um, and I just thought it'd be interesting to have a look at it and, and see if it actually works um, we'll just pop these screws in I don't know why I'm doing this in camera but you're getting it so there you go 
so yeah thanks for watching um if you enjoyed the video give me the thumbs up if you didn't and you probably didn't give me the thumbs down i don't mind what you give me because it's all good interaction from you um of course if you have any comments or questions or uh, you want to just tell me how rubbish the video was of course pop them down in the comment section below right if you haven't already done so and you'd like to consider doing so click on my fat head down here to subscribe um and yeah thanks for watching and as always take care of yourselves and all the best